Hi, this is video number three of chapter two, Perfect Competition. This video is about price supports and production quotas. So besides setting a minimum price, the government can also regulate the market price by increasing the price of a good in other ways. For example, much of agricultural policies are based on a system of price supports, often combined with incentives to reduce or re restrict the production. In this part of chapter 2, we are going to examine how these policies work and their impact on consumers, producers, but also the effects for the government itself. So price supports are a type of regulation that has the purpose to increase the prices of products such as tobacco, dairy products and many others, so that the producer of those goods can receive higher incomes. One way to do this for the government to set is to set a support price like PES, this will be the support price, and then buy up whatever output is needed to keep the market price at this level. So this slide is going to show this, this price support. Let's examine the resulting gains and losses for producers, consumers and the government. At the price of PS, which is the price support, consumers are going to demand only Q1, as we can see. The PS is crossing with the demand at Q1. But the supply at this price will increase until Q2. So the producer would like to produce Q2, but the, con the consumers will only demand Q1. And what happened with this difference? As the government wants to benefit the producer to maintain this price and avoid having inventories pile up in producer warehouse, the government will buy this difference between Q2 and Q1. The QG is the quantity that the government is going to buy from the producers. So, in effect, the government adds its demand, QG, to the demand of the consumers and producers can sell all they want at the price PS. Okay, so this will be the final demand. Counting on the demand of the government, the quantity bought by the government, and the, the D is the, the consumer's demand. So those consumers who purchase the good have to pay the higher price, PS, instead of P0, which will be the market clearing price. And so they are going to suffer a loss of consumer surplus given by this by this rectangle A, okay, but they are going to lose also B. So, when the market clearing price P0 and Q0 was set in a competitive, uh, per, uh, um, competitive market, the consumer surplus was this triangle, the triangle above P0 below the demand. But now that the price is only PS, the new consumer surplus will be this smaller triangle, which is above PS and under the demand, okay, at Q1. So, as you can see, I repeat, the consumers have lost A and B. But what happened um, with the producers? On the other hand, the producers are going to gain because this policy has the objective to benefit them. So producers are now selling at the price PS a larger quantity, which is Q2. Instead of Q1, they will sell Q2, which is the quantity that they would like to sell at PS. So they sell at PS at a higher price and they sell Q1, Q2. Sorry. So in this slide, you can see that when, the, when there was perfect competition, the market clearing price was P0, so this triangle was the producer surplus. The triangle, the area below P0, above the supply. But now that they produce at PS, the triangle has increased. It goes from 
PS, the area is below PS, under PS, and above the supply at a quantity of Q2. So the producer have gained A, B, and D. Okay, because they are going to sell in Q2. So what is happening with the government? The government is the one that has to pay for the output in purchases. So the government will pay QG, which is the difference between Q2 and Q1, QG, and the price will be PS. This is the price that the government pays for this QG. So what is the, the cost to the government? The cost to the government is exactly this area. QG, which is the difference between Q2 and Q1, multiplied by the height of this rectangle, PS. Or what is the same, all the speckled rectangle, including D and B. Okay, so it's PS multiplied by Q2 minus Q1. So the total change in welfare for the society will be the result of adding the change in the consumer surplus plus the change in the producer surplus plus the cost to the government. Okay, so it will be minus A minus B, which is the consumer surplus, the change, plus A plus B plus D, which is the change in producer surplus and the cost to the government will be all these Q2 minus Q1 multiplied by PS. So at the end, the change in the welfare will be D minus Q2 minus Q1 multiplied by QS. Okay, this is the change with the price support. And then we have the second option, which will be the production quota. Besides entering the market and buying up output, thereby increasing total demand, the government can also cause the price of a good to rise by reducing the supply. So the government can do this by decree and simply setting the quotas on how much each firm can produce. So by setting the appropriate quotas, the price can then be forced up to any arbitrary level, like here. Okay, so if the government sets that the maximum quantity that can be exchanged in this market is Q1, the new supply will be S prime, okay? So the new price will be PS, because at this quantity, the price will increase until PS. So this is exactly how many city governments maintain high taxi fares. So they limit total supply by requiring each taxi cab to have a license and then limit the total number of licenses. And who are the winners of this uh, regulation? Obviously, taxi cabs companies that own the licenses. And who are the losers? The consumer. This slide is showing how the prices can be increased by reducing the supply in this way with production quotas. You can see that uh, if we limit the supply, the car supply is going to become a vertical, completely inelastic vertical line at the quantity of Q1, where the quota is set. And the market price is increased from P0 to PS. Okay. So this slide is also showing that the change in consumer and producer surplus results from this policy are exactly what we have here. So. In the beginning, when the price, the market clearing price in perfect competition was P0 and the quantity was Q0, this was the triangle that uh, expressed the consumer surplus, okay? Area above P0, below the demand. But now the new consumer surplus is exactly this smaller trapezoid. So the consumer have lost the area B because they are buying at PS and the quantity is only Q1. Um, so uh, for them, the new consumer star plus is changing and it will now be 
this is smaller triangle. So I repeat, the consumer has lost this area B, but also the square A, okay? Then as the new price is PS, the consumer star plus is this smaller triangle. Compare with the situation in perfect competition, okay? Which was this bigger triangle. So they have lost A and B. The consumer has lost A and B. What happened with the producer? For the producer, they are now getting the price of PS. Okay, this will be the price. And what happened with them? In a market, uh, in a perfect competition, perfect competitive market, the, the price was P0. So the producer surplus was this area, the area below the price of P0 and above the supply at a quantity of Q0. But now they can only sell Q1. So at the end, they gain A and they lose C. But again, as this policy, this regulation has the objective to benefit the producer, what the government is going to do is to pay, is to pay a money, some money directly to the producer. And this money corresponds to the areas A, C and D, which will be the gain for the producer if there was a price support instead of a production quota. This has a cost to the government, but first we will talk about the new producer surplus. So the new producer surplus will be not only the area A, as we said, but on also they are winning C, B and D. So at the end, the change in the producer surplus is plus A minus C, plus the payments for not producing in Q2, but producing in Q1. Okay, so at least B, C and D. This would be what the government would pay to the producer. B, C and D. Why? Because as I have said, the producer would like to produce in Q2. And as the government wants to benefit to the producer, they will pay this different to them, okay? So what happened for the government? The cost to the government now is lower compared to a price support because in a price support, the government was buying the quantity between Q2 and Q1. But here, in this regulation, they are not going to do this. They are just going to pay these areas to the producers, but they are not going to buy any uh, uh, any difference in the quantity that they would like to supply compared with the quantity demanded in the market. Okay, so this regulation is cheaper for the government compared to a price support. Okay, because now the cost to the government is only B, C, and D. Okay. So what is the change in welfare? The change in welfare will be the change in the consumer surplus plus the change in the producer surplus plus the cost to the government, which will be minus A minus B plus A plus B plus D minus B minus C minus D. And then at the end, we have minus B minus C. Okay, so the debt weight lost will be again minus B minus C. Okay. So it will be plus minus A minus B this is the change for the consumer surplus and then plus A plus B plus D which is what the producer has gained and the cost to the government minus B minus C minus D. Okay, so the debt weight with loss is minus B minus C. And that's all for the moment. See you in the next video.